So I've been using this simple item called a bodkin to pass some elastic around the elastic casing of this sleeve for a dress that I am currently making. And it got me thinking about the little things that really do make a difference and the things that I have bought over the years that I regret purchasing. The reasons why I find them not so useful and what I am using as alternatives. So if you're ready to find out what I regret buying over the past few years, then I'm ready. Let's get started. At the very top of my list are these pins. They're called fork pins. I bought them thinking that I'll be able to use them to bind together, you know, where you have two seams meeting together. I thought it would be useful for that, but I found that using just basic pins do the job as well. And I don't really reach for them. I just feel like it's just one of those purchases that I'm just sitting there and collecting dust because I don't instinctively go for them or reach for them when I'm making clothes. Those who like it, love it, but I'm just, I don't rave about them. So it's one of those things that I regret purchasing. It's not just useful to me. So second on my list has to be these rufflers. The first one I bought by myself, I purchased this online after seeing a few ads on Facebook. And please, please, please make sure you're buying something that you're definitely going to use. That's the message behind this video. Just go for the basics. Basics do the job just well. It was a ruffler and it's just so complicated, so bogus, so clunky and I don't rave about it and I regret buying it. The second one, my sister-in-law watched a video on Facebook, or was it on Instagram? I can't remember. She saw it and she bought it for me and I've got the same, it's just the same thing, different packaging. And I just don't, I'm not crazy about them. It's, it might be, it might float somebody else's boat, but it just, it's not just for me. Um, sewing machine feet just do the job. All I need to do is spend a bit more time um, adjusting the gathers or pleats or, ga you know, ruffles. I'd really like to know if you have any regrets tools or gadgets that you use that you regret purchasing do let me know in the comment section i'd really love to hear from you there's another thing that i have on my list that i don't find it a regret but i just don't reach for it because i automatically reach for my pinking shears the actual pair of scissors that are pinking these here i do not really reach for and i find them a pointless purchase you've got it's like a rotary cutter but the blade is um serrated or like zigzaggy like my pinking shears and i hardly use this this would be useful for anyone who's got like an embroidery shop or someone who creates a, an embroidery kit to sell. So they have to cut out these squares for people to use to create embroidery designs. Because you need to cut out lots of layers and you have to cut out, do lots of cutting over time. This would be useful for them. But for me, who makes clothes and um, who has to do some pinking, maybe when I want to um, adjust when I want to grade um, facings or necklines of garments. I don't reach for these. I just use my pair of pinking shears and not the rotary cutter version. Okay, so anyone who's got conditions that have to do with the muscles of the hand would find this really useful because it's a very good design. It's very clever. However, they are not your conventional type of scissors. So, I don't automatically reach for these. And I, I bought them because I was very curious to know how they work. I purchased it at, I think it was one of those fairs that you attend and you see all sorts of haberdashery shops and these things get sold to you and you're like, oh, I would like one of these, but I just hardly reach for these. But I think they are very, they've got this spring function here, which I think would be very useful for people who've got difficulty with it their finger muscles and their hands, arthritis, that type of thing. But I just don't use it. I hardly use these scissors. But they're the very good design. I'm not bashing them, but I just don't reach for them. So it's a regret because I don't use them. Some of you might disagree with me on this one, but I think I made a huge mistake buying lots of threads for my overlocker in different colors. I know. <sighs> 
I know the reason for saying that is I found that changing over locker threads aren't really fun for me I like to have just the one one two or three colors you know interchange them over a period of time and I think what I would advise and what's more cost-effective as well is to just have one of these for in every color for your actual sewing of your garments but then with the overlocking I recommend just getting black white and gray because they kind of blend in with most colors I mean do what floats your boat but for me who doesn't like changing overlocker threads I've found that these were a useless purchase all I needed was just the one I don't need all four of them so it will take me so long to get through each of these and um, I won't be buying these threads for a very very long time I hardly hardly overlock with these I know it gives it I get it gives your garments a beautiful professional finish let me know in the comment section if you feel the same way that I feel I wonder if it resonates with anybody else in the comment section I'd really really love to hear from you let me know in the comment section okay this next thing has to do with aesthetics it's got to be this brown paper I bought this roll of brown paper many years ago and I've still got it and the reason why I class this paper as a regretful purchase when you trace sewing patterns from commercial sewing patterns or indie sewing patterns I would recommend using white paper because you'll be able to see the lines beneath the paper brown paper defeats that purpose because I mean it's brown it's opaque you won't really be able to see underneath you won't be able to see the lines beneath the paper to trace so that's my main reason for classing this as a regret purchase. I also regret it because I prefer white when I make my videos, my pattern making videos. Brown, I don't like it because it just <clears throat> it's not aesthetically pleasing for me. And I'm working so hard to get through this paper, paper roll. I use it for wrapping presents now because I found some really beautiful ways for wrapping presents using brown paper. It's just minimal, classy when you wrap it beautifully and you use all these different embellishments to make them look pretty but for making patterns cancelled if you watched my room tour video you would have noticed that I asked if anyone could give me recommendations on how to use this this is called a flexi ruler yeah it's been graduated into inches and centimeters I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the screen it's useful for a lot of people because after that video the comments in the comment section actually taught me something it taught me that one man's meat is another man's poison <laughs> it's true though it's true because this has so many uses people use it for copying necklines from ready-to-wear garments for um, creating armholes when they're creating sewing patterns you can make you can customize your sewing patterns using this it's also useful for when you're measuring curves this is one of those purchases that I made many years ago and I hardly reach for it if you still use yours <laughs> let me know in the comment section it will also be interesting for other people to read and find out right so when you look at this what do you think you think a uh, pressing ham it's actually not that big it's a very small pressing ham that I found online and this actually fits into my hand like this now with this one you can use it to press the sleeve cap of your garments so you put this inside and the heat of the iron won't burn you because you've got this padded part like on top of your hand I just use my ironing board for the pressing and always forget to go with this and I think the reason for all of these is just the fact that I started sewing with basics and all of these upgrades haven't really got into my routine if anyone lives in London and would like the ruffler just let me know in the comment section or drop me a DM on Instagram and we'll work it out and I'll post it to you here is a very pretty board I would call this an a3 size board so it's very handy I bought this at a fair as well now this here serves as an ironing board but the reason why I don't really rate it is because it's not large enough for 
clothes making. It'll be useful for people who quilt, people who make smaller items. It's useful having an ironing mat on the table because you don't always want to grab your big ironing board. So if you've got a very tiny little seam to press, these are useful, but for me, no, because it's just too small for the type of sewing that I do. Like the parts of the garments, they're much bigger than this and this just doesn't really do the job. I've got another one that is about an A1, I say A1? I think it's about an A1 size ironing mat and it's a wool pad. I'll leave a link for that one in my description box below if you'd like to purchase it on Amazon. But I'll have a link in the description box if you'd like one. So what I use this for instead is I use it for my laptop. It's just to protect my skin from the heat that comes from the laptop. So it just serves as a, a, a laptop mat or board, if that makes sense. But it's just pretty, but it just doesn't do the job for me. So the questions are, do these items actually get the job done? Yes. Do people find these items useful? Yes. Are there any actual items that I find useful in my day-to-day -day sewing projects? Absolutely. And that video is here on the screen. I'm going to leave you with this video and I hope to see you over at that video. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. All the very best. Take care. Bye.